Good morning. Uh, we're summing uh, our, our course the second session. We will uh, present uh, Aristotle, Megaiki, and Stoics, uh, beginning of the Middle Ages, Boesius, Atlantus, uh, Computista, uh, it's the plan. Uh, and uh, tomorrow we will start with the uh, better partner. So, um, Aristotle uh, uh, is a very, very great figure to, to, uh, to many fields, to various fields of the knowledge, especially for us in logic, because Aristotle is the father of logic. And uh, the contributions of Aristotle to the establishment of logic and the scientific method have been widely celebrated. And his theory of syllogism, uh, both categorical and modal syllogism, uh, are, is the first of the well known, the, the, the known Western logical systems. Uh, we argue that in the core of his deductive theory, the stage rate describes some de deductive schemes in which the presence of inconsistency does not imply the trivialization of the logical theory involved. Here we have uh, some, some stuff, the uh, critical edition of the analytical and the combat works are sources for their research and, and other a lot of scholarly. Aristotle seems to propose uh, results of a consistent character in some situations of his logical work, and especially in three situations, in three situations, three uh, and the serves. The first is from uh, analytica priora, the prior analytics. Uh, the second book of the uh, prior analytics is a very important book uh, because uh, in the second book of the prior analytics, Aristotle uh, um, produces a lot of uh, methodological discussions about his uh, own theory, about the deductive theory, and the uh, um, Standing and uh, assessing uh, his uh, logical uh, theories to the limit. In this, in these first chapters, two to four, um, Aristotle uh, studies syllogisms as how many how syllogisms can be uh, valid from false premises. This, this, uh, this is the first uh, assert, it's very important. The second, the decisive, decisive uh, assert is the, in the same book, in the second book of prior analytics, uh, chapter 15. In chapter 15, Aristotle explains how valid syllogisms can be uh, uh, produced based uh, on opposite opposite premises as uh, it has um, contrary and contradictory or are contradictory premises and uh, uh, in this chapter we, we can see uh, how skilled was Aristotle as a logician. The first is, uh, the, the third excerpt is uh, on the posterior analytics and the first book uh, chapter 11. This chapter, uh, in this chapter, Aristotle uh, shows that the principle of non contradiction is not a general presupposition of all demonstrations. Uh, uh, reminding that uh, demonstration for Aristotle in, in Aristotle's vocabulary is a uh, scientific syllogism. Uh, but uh, uh, the principle of non contradiction is only required uh, of those, those syllogisms in which the conclusion must be proved on the basis of the premises. Uh, 
Uh, all passages are well known in scholarly. It's important to, to, to say because uh, we are inserting our uh, trial of the interpretation in the in, in, a, in a hermeneutic tradition, tradition that is a, a bit longer. Uh, Isaac Yusik in 1906 discusses that is the first scholar to discuss analytica, uh, posterior analytics uh, uh, alpha 11. Um, Jan Kashevich is another giant in this uh, discussion. In 1910, in his famous mono monography on the principle of contradiction in Aristotle, he also discusses uh, the passage uh, from uh, posterior analytics uh, A11, and, and, and the, he made it school because uh, this, this, this study of uh, Lukashevich is very important to um, wake the, the, the interest, the, the, the curiosity of uh, uh, worldwide scholars and the uh, the renaissance of the Aristotelian uh, studies, uh, uh, studies concerning Aristotelian theory of syllogisms, um, was um, recovered a lot after Lukashevich's uh, study. Bohensky, uh, Bohensky in 1956 quotes and analyzes both passages, two passages. Uh, prior analytics uh, uh, B15 and posterior analytics A11 uh, in his Renal and Formale uh, Logique. Uh, in English, there is a translation a History of Formal Logic. Uh, Petzik is another important scholar of uh, um, Aristotelian syllogism, Aristotelian logic, and in 1959 he studied in detail this this in this chapters two to four uh, that are uh, two, the three chapters in fact two three and four in which uh, we uh, find the a lot of discussions and, and the, this this uh, the chapters has especially two passages uh, we will uh, highlight in, this, in what follows, in which uh, these passages were very important for uh, posterity, to, to the development of uh, logical uh, consequence theories, especially in Middle Ages. And uh, uh, near of us, or near um, Priest 2000, uh, seven uh, has a, a paper uh, in which he indicates that syllogistic of uh, beta B15 is far consistent, but Priest doesn't um, um, doesn't qualify what, what kind of far consistent would be good it's fine in the third, in the chapter, and it, it's it's a, he, he only passes um, away from the. Just says that says that the passage is, is a, a and a, and a piece of evidence that Aristotle could be uh, read as a very consistent uh, um, runner. These chapters. Uh, Two to four are essential for Aristotle's argument against the axioms. According to Petzik, they give a far, fair idea of the technical skill of Aristotle's logical discussions. The study right explains the logical ontological meaning of the two conclusions which follow from false premises. That is the, the the subject of the, the chapter. Uh, I will highlight two passages. Uh, that is the first, 
in, in, in red, we, we can see the, 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 the most important uh, auctoritas. Auctoritas is a, a, a quotation uh, as a statement, a very important statement. And these ones that are in red were resumed by Boesius and in Middle Ages as a very important inspiration and justification uh, to the uh, logicians and the philosophers of uh, uh, the future, in this case, to, to engage in positions that they uh, suppose Aristotle was sustained. So, Aristotle says, now it is possible for circumstances to be such that the premises by means of which the deduction comes about are true, or that are false, or that one premise is true and the other false. The conclusion, however, is either true or false of necessity. It is not possible then to deduce a falsehood from true premises, but it is possible to deduce a truth from false ones except that it is not a deduction of the why, but of the that. For a deduction of the why is not possible from false premises. The reason why this is so will be explained in what follows. And the discussion uh, is developed after that uh, overture passage. The idea here is um, uh, is, uh, we can see that Aristotle are in front of uh, a very uh, a, a fact that we know today that in some cases we can uh, we can we can take we can withdraw um, uh, true conclusions from false premises. But Aristotle make a, here a, a very a very sharp distinction that is uh, that appears in, in all the time in, in Aristotelian corpus because one thing is uh, they do something to explain why, and when we, you you uh, try to explain why something is uh, of some some way to explain, we need to. Depart from true, true premises, true premises. But in, in other cases, uh, we are just uh, working with uh, uh, not why, but what. what. It's a, a, a weaker, weaker. It's not an explanation, especially scientific explanation. It's a weaker uh, a way to describe the world. So Aristotle works with this distinction, and this distinction we uh, will uh, uh, we will see uh, the, the, the implications of that uh, of this uh, argument. The general the general meaning of this passage is historically linked to the axioms. Historically linked, not doctrine. Uh, not the theoretic, theoretically linked. It's very important to, to uh, make it, uh, this statement clear. So, uh, according to Sprite, uh, the former passage has motivated the definition of a bodily consequence in medieval ages. According uh, with this, the antecedent cannot be true without a consequent. From which straightly follows the consequence now as x false. Because uh, the idea is if an argument is valid uh, from true premises, we have to make, we have to, uh, to uh, derive a true conclusion. But if the, the premises are false, maybe in the limit consistent set of, of premises would be false, we could uh, derive uh, um, through a true conclusion, but it's a, a limited case. 
Bohansky, in his celebrated informal logic, affirms that the next council is a medieval contribution to, to the history of logic. Uh, the excerpt of Bohansky is, is this, uh, translated from German into English. This, the Aristotelian discussion of valid syllogism based on false premises, is not yet the scholastic principle ex falso sector codelift but only the assertion that one can form syllogisms in which one or both premises are false and the conclusion true. Um, this um, passage also, uh, I select some pieces of scholarly commenting the, the, the passage. Petsy concludes, Aristotle does not say that a true conclusion could follow with necessity from false premises. But he says and teaches consistently that the conclusion which follows from false premises is not necessarily true. So slight distinctions, uh, very, very sensitive uh, in the conceptual definitions. Aristotle looks to looks in this in these chapters two, three, and four. Aristotle looks uh, for generalizing the observation that. The conclusion is a syllogism based on uh, of a syllogism based on false premises is not necessarily true. This argument of the stature uh, plays a central role in later debate on the ex false, especially particularly in medieval logic. The Aristotelian demonstration of the result is elegant and ingenious, but is nevertheless, as Lukashevich's, shows incomplete in a certain sense. I will not have time to uh, describe the whole steps of the the the, the Aristotelian demonstration. It's a, a very tricky demonstration. So uh, it's it, in this case uh, we can apply a, a kind of a pragmatical principle of uh, using linear analysis. For example, in book beta. Uh, in Buki Gamma of Metaphysics, when Aristotle discusses the principle of non contradiction, the famous book of, uh, uh, of, of Metaphysics, for example, uh, Lukashevich uh, uh, shows that Aristotle uh, was not so successful in proving, in the uh, demonstrating the, the principle of non contradiction, but it was what he intended to do. And in this uh, chapter, chapter two of the second book of the prior analytics, uh, uh, kind of the same thing uh, happens again. Uh, the start to write, uh, this is the second uh, from the chapter four, uh, this, this uh, second uh, uh, key excerpt uh, is that uh, here, Aristotle, the uh, um, Stagite begins by pointing out what later became famous as seedbed of invention. In Latin, for the Latin language speakers, is uh, I will write in the, in the board, uh, a more uh, the Latin, Latin expression for, for this translation. Seminarium Inveniandoro, the, the seedbed the, 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 of inventions. This, this, uh, this statement in red was considered by Boetius and by Adamard and many others in the 12th century as the seedbed of invention because the, uh, the polemic around uh, ex uh, was a, um, a disputation about the the, the, the correct sense, the correct meaning of this this uh, this, this autotopus. Uh, Aristotle says the reason is that when two things 
are so related to each other that if one is, then the other of necessity is, then when the second is not, the first will not be either. But when the second is, there is no necessity to the first to be. But it is impossible for the same thing to be of the necessity both when a certain thing is and when the same thing is not. And uh, there are a lot of uh, details involving this, this passage. This passage in, in, in the original Greek is very cryptic. But uh, for medieval thinkers, for example, they don't have uh, contact, first contact uh, with the Greek text of this passage, but uh, they work with uh, 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 Western translations of this quotation, of this authorities. And in Latin, in Latin the, the, the translation of Boesius gave a, a, a stone to, to, to this you know, statement that was uh, after uh, the starting point for a lot of creativity in the Middle Ages. I, I kind of misunderstood that it was uh, had a, um, a happy ending because they, they, they thought they are talking about what Aristotle uh, has said, but in fact, in some cases, we can, uh, we can uh, consider that they are talking about themselves, about their own interpretation. And uh, this confusing, uh, and Boesius has a lot of this, this role in the history of philosophy and the history of logic, the, the syncretism of, of, of readings, the, the confusions that uh, Boethius has himself, maybe himself, by himself, uh, or the, the interpreters and the, the other scholars and the other thinkers that uh, receive the, and the work with the Boethian translations of Aristotelian, Aristotle, were, were, were this night. To the, the future of uh, medieval logic. Uh, at the end of the previous passage, Aristotle hopes to generalize the results of, the, of his investigation relative to the syllogism based on the false premises from a key principle. Uh, here is uh, we have a um, a paraphrasis of what Aristotle uh, had said in, in the red lines before, and uh, the idea, this, this interpretation is very uh, thin, very parallel with the reading of medievals, and just in the, in, the, in the future. Once the same thing is and is not, it's necessarily impossible to it to be or entail the same. And this reading, we, we also can produce a, a formalization, a, a regimentation of the, the statement, and we, 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 will, we will get something like that. A, when the, the, the thing is not A, when the thing is not A, and this is not, and do not entail, do not entail the same. The same is bad, is, is a B, is a, is a B. So this, uh, uh, this statement uh, reaches something very near to the ex house presentation as we know. And as medieval logicians knew. Uh, tradition has considered this Aristotelian statement that this Aristotelian statement may be understood as an ex falso non sector quadrilateral. So there uh, we reach now the the the, the main test by, by Aristotle because Aristotle himself has a contribution to the history of logic of per consistent logic. He has a position in uh, chapter B15. It's by himself. But he also 
has uh, a great influence what happens before uh, uh, happens after. Uh, Aristotle deepened in his analytics of the syllogistic consequence by stating prior analytics. And also, resuming what we have uh, just seen, so, uh, a true conclusion may be derived from false premises and from opposites, opposite premises, contrary or contradictory, a valid negative conclusion may be derived in specific modes of the second and third figures of the syllogism. Categorical syllogism, not modal syllogism in this case. Uh, in analytica, in prior analytics uh, B15, Aristotle says, in which figures it is possible to deduce from opposite premises, and in which figures it is not, will be evident in the following way. And he, then he starts the, the analysis. The, according to him, I will summarize the, the, the main ideas and it will show the, the main syllogisms. The, the syllogisms we are um, mentioning and uh, displaying here in, in the slide uh, the, the logical form of the syllogisms. According to him, only in two figures we can affirm and deny a subject of the same predicate, both in the middle term, because in the in the middle term is predicate on the both. This happens in the second figure of the syllogism. And affirm, uh, on the other hand, uh, affirm and deny a predicate belonging to a same subject because the, the middle term is both subject in, in both premises. It, that's the case in the third figure. I don't know if you remember <laughs> our uh, syllogistic studies, uh, people in philosophy, initial courses in traditional logic. In the second figure, we have uh, this configuration, this attack. Aristotle was, was uh, is remarking is that in the second figure we can affirm the same subject S and P because of the structure of the conclusion, but uh, the middle term is predicating both premises. In the third, in the third one, we have um, opposite situation. What we can um, pay attention to is that Aristotle are dealing with uh, the language of the syllogism uh, very, very uh, uh, wisely to, 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 just to check if, uh, how, uh, how, what we can uh, do in the language of uh, his own syllogism to in order to make it, uh, to produce the, the syllogisms uh, he are discussing. And in this process, he uses a technique very, uh, he uses this technique in some places, but not so common. Uh, we, we, we all know that a syllogism has to be three terms. But in this case, Aristotle works with two terms. Because with two terms, exactly, you have to, we will have, we will have a, a, a situation in which the, the first premise, for example, could be uh, of the type E, uh, a negative, universal negative, and uh, a particular affirmative. Affirming, affirming and denying the same from the same the same predicate of the same subjects and this verse. So let's let's see the Aristotelian syllogisms. These are the syllogisms uh, from opposite premises according to Aristotle. In the second figure, 
we have the Balopo, and you you can see that uh, we don't have three terms. We have no, just two terms because he is uh, working with this uh, strategy. So uh, in in Barobo, for example, uh, universal affirmative and particular negative. If you remember, uh, square of opposition. The square of opposition. We have this. Contradictories. And the other opposition relations. So, in Barofo, for example, we have a major premise, affirmative universal, and a minor premise, uh, particular, negative uh, particular. So, in, in all these cases, Aristotle's are uh, working with uh, uh, opposite premises. In some opposite premises, for example, when the premises are just contrary. Um, or uh, opposite premises uh, can be contraries or contradictories. Aristotle uh, uh, deals with the, all situations. And uh, in this case, we have Barocco, Camistris, Cesari, Estino. And the third figure, we have Felacto, Bocardo, and Ferriso. And I, I opened the book here to, to, to read to you the, the, the Aristotelian example. Um, for example, in this case, we have a camistris. A camistris here. Um, Aristotle uh, words the, and enunciates the, the syllogisms on, on the inverse form. So he, he says, if good is predicate of every science, and good is not predicate of a particular science, therefore, science is not predicate of a particular science. The, 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 the X factor here is that the conclusions are all negative. And a similar situation we we, we we always find in centuries logical theories, logical systems that are weakly part consistent because from opposites or contradictories or contraries, we we not at all deduce everything. We deduce just a kind of uh, proposition, a kind of a special class of the, 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 the formula of the, the statement of the language. Okay? So, uh, 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 tomorrow I will hit the uh, result, uh, some two results here, Picaroco and Bocardo, because they are. So, I the rotation of I understand Rarity is universal. I can understand the smaller one. A, B. Ah, it's smaller. Uh, smaller A, B uh, are terms, are, are variables for terms. A, uh, the, 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 the uh, so or, or B is A. Yes, yes. Uh, for example, uh, A, B, A. Um, what does it mean? What does it mean? Give an example. See, yeah, every and uh, all. Oh. Uh, yeah. All B, B is predicate of all A. Yeah, yeah because in, in, in this case we are uh, adopting the, the Aristotelian way of right. Aristotle, we are family, familiar with uh, the, the writing. We, we are familiar with, uh, for example, um, all A is B. Aristotle, the statements are B is predicated of O A. So in, in this notation, we are inverting. 
the, the notation to, to fit better to the Aristotelian test. But we are familiarized with this, this, doing this, um, this way to, of, 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 read, of reading. So, and here, I'm um, Evander, A is B. According to your notation, you have A, B, A, less is more. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Exactly what we. Uh, like a letter. One of them oh. must be. Yeah. 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 No doubt. Yeah. This is the, the notation we are drawing here. So, uh, this. I, 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 I read the first time this, this quotation. I understand the meaning of B, I, and Ah, okay. This. This. The Middle Ages. The Middle Ages. Uh, medieval Egyptians. Um, in fact, the, the square of opposition, that is, this diagram, was proposed in the second century by Apuleius of Madaurus, that was a platonic, uh, platonic author, but uh, the, the logical correlations and the positions that we have in the square uh, were uh, masterly described by Aristotle in own interpretation, the interpretation, the tract, the, the, the second tract, tract the treatise of the, the organon, but the diagram um, appears uh, so two for centuries after. In the ages A, A, E, I, and O uh, were uh, mnemonic strategies, were uh, a kind of uh, glue to remember, because in the ages they have to use a lot of memory to, um, to take with himself the, the knowledge. Uh, to, to be made uh, a very short, very shorter explanation, very fast. Um, here we have uh, um, universal, universal um, quantification. Here, affirmative, all, all B is A. Here, no B. Oh, I'm worthy. For simplicity, I will make you a our ROA, okay? On the hard time. But conserving this, uh, this presentation to, to not make conclusions. No A is B. Some way is B, some A is not B. And we have a, this we square, the square has some quadrants. So this superior quadrant is the, the quadrant of the universal predication, the inferior particular predication, and at the middle, this one is the uh, negative quadrants and affirmative quadrants. So, So, uh, these this names, these proper names of the syllogisms are not a, a, a matter of choice. 
and each of these names calls the away kind of, each of the syllogisms can be the dosis in the core of the Aristotelian theory of syllogism. Okay? Just to make sure I understood. So the first line that the barcode should be read uh, there is a no for all B all B's are A's. Uh, there is a B which is not A, therefore there is an A which is not A. Is that right? Oh, in the, in the Aristotelian way, we have to, to, to make the, the reading. For example, B is a predicate of OA. B is, is a predicate, is not a predicate of some A. A is not a predicate of not A, of some way. Some A, yeah, in this way. This is the order we, we, we find in our student tests. But for our proposals, uh, and the, 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 the Latin authors in the Middle Ages, they adopt, adapted the, this uh, form of Aristotle rights. And one of the hypotheses is that for Aristotle, uh, when Aristotle, in fact, writes of the both forms, in, in his treatises. But when he writes of this form, he, are, uh, he is uh, intending to uh, emphasize the predication relation. And the, the focus in this case is on the predicate. And the extensional and intentional readings of syllogisms are uh, expressed by Aristotle when he uh, sweep. Uh, Swaps of two the two, two uh, forms of the uh, statements. Very very wise uh, for uh, an author, a genius that uh, does not have formal language, <laughs> but uh, using Greek uh, very wisely. Sorry, but in conclusion, A is taken both as a predicate and a constant of A. Stand up. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. In the conclusion, all the conclusions take it both as a predicate and uh, a Yeah, because the conclusions are all of this form. Um, um, no science in the, in the chemistries. No science is a science. This piece of syllogistic is uh, a non-reflexive. Just produces non It's an anti-identity theory. These syllogisms are anti-identity theory. Anyway, uh, yeah. please. Please stand up and speak. I want to know about this morning. O A A and some A is not A. Some A is not, is not A. All these conclusions are of this form. A is if the, if they were positive affirmative conclusions it would be identities. A is A. Every A is A. Uh, some A is A. But here we have negative conclusions. All of them. Yeah, so the premise has a small uh, there B, but there is no B in the conclusion. So Aristotle uh, may use some predicate. Yeah, he yeah. 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 has he yeah. has used it. So this this two of was drop. Let yeah, just ask a question. Uh, I've been waiting for a very long for you to go on from this, and it's very important that this is understood. But I don't dispute the validity. This is very clear from the theory. But now we're discussing what it means. It means that some A is not A, or uh, A is not predicated of some A. Doesn't matter how you read. Is there any uh, use for it which is not a poetic use? Uh, I mean, this. <laughs> what, what's Aristotle going to do with it? Is, he didn't yeah. say this is bad, and then we conclude that it's not. Yeah, very. Thank you. Very nice question. And uh, in the in the in the in the, the end of this chapter. Aristotle exposes, uh, he, he, he makes all the, the, 
the combinations analyzed. He, he has two errors here because the medieval take a catch the, 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 the fail of Aristotelian formulation because, for example, Barocco and Bocardo, they start with B. And Barocco and Bocardo in, in Aristotelian theory of syllogism are reduced to Barbara. And Barbara, they have to be, they have the, this letter C inside the name. Are you seeing the C? Co, Barocco, Bocardo. This is an indication that we have to make a reduction and a contradiction. A reduction is impossible. A reduction is absurd. So, if coherently, these syllogisms are paraconsistent. And this is what in paraconsistent logic we lose reduction ad absurd. Aristotle doesn't catch the point. And this chapter presents all these syllogisms as, as we see. But the medieval materials, the Celtic Scots, for example, he catches. John Borida, he catches the, the point that the, uh, both Baroque and the Pocard cannot be included in, in this list. And I did once say that you could also avoid it by not confusing the minor term and the, the other one, the major term, yeah. and not reusing it, using, using something as a predicate and a term at the same time. Yeah, uh, the, the, the only way to do not to confuse them, because in, in, in conventional syllogism, middle term doesn't appear in conclusion. Yeah, and this is the only term that it, it repeats, is repeated in, in, the, in the practice. Um, in the first figure, for example, um, this is a, a conventional syllogism. Middle term, conclusion. Middle term, conclusion. Subject, subject, the minor term, we have predicate of the conclusion, minor, minor term. And, <laughs> In this configuration of the syllogism from opposite premises, the, the only trace that allows us to, to distinguish uh, if, uh, the, the, in conclusion, we are talking about the, the middle or, or the, 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 the other terms, because major and minor terms don't make more sense here. Is that the fact that the, the term that doesn't appear in conclusion is the, the term you are dealing with? He could have written it in a sentence somebody forgot to copy, a sentence saying that S cannot be P. Don't mix the two things. Don't say don't use the same thing for <laughs> subject and predicate. Then this will, will not happen, right? This would not happen. And this is one of the reasons, uh, Juan, that uh, in, in hermeneutical tradition, this chapter, chapter 15, was considered uh, a bit lazy for the characters, as a, a, a chapter that could not be Aristotelian because it's very different from the, the other situations we have in this, this, this theory. Yeah, yeah. Evandro is discussing this because this Aristotelian excerpt is very delicate and it uh, allowed, it provoked serious discussions during the Middle Ages, and until now, we are trying to understand. And ex exactly this excerpt uh, provoked distinct positions during the Middle Ages, because this discussion, this interpretation is not clear. And some authors, based on Boesius, he will speak, defended that Aristotle has accepted the ex falso, and the other defended that Aristotle didn't accept the ex falso in general, because Aristotle has never mentioned explicitly the ex falso. That's the question. And then this part, this accept, accept. Uh, provoked to distinct positions in, during the Middle Ages, and until now we are discussing, trying to understand him. That's okay. That's okay. 
Provoking a serious discussion, uh, yeah. like oh, I mean, angels I mean, being dense in the head of a pin, can also be uh, happen yeah. with other circumstances. I just wanted to know what to do with this, and you just answered it was lazy. Good. Good okay, answer. thank you. Uh, but uh, the slide of in which, uh, but there is a, a compliment to what they are uh, uh, asking me. I start on the end of chapter fifteen. He, he says. These syllogisms are apt, are good, at most to uh, deduce the reasons of what. They cannot be for explanation, used for explanation, because they don't have, as we all know, uh, true premises. Without true premises, we cannot prove the conclusion correct, soundly. So, uh, these syllogisms, uh, I've stopped in the, in the, in the final, fi final chapter, final, final paragraph of this the chapter says that the syllogisms, the utility, uh, they, they could help us to deal with the sophists, <laughs> to, to, to recognize when uh, the tricky arguments that the sophists and the other person can produce in uh, dialectical contexts. This is the, the, the Aristotelian answer. Kashevich, Wu Kashevich, the Polish, the great Polish logician, also discussed this. No, 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 the other, the other. Yes, the other. The other it's, yes. it's incredible, because when I was uh, making my PhD with Italy in 2007, six, I was reading Bohensky's book, and I, I see the passage, my God, and uh, about 2,000 years, and this, this passage was there, waiting for us, and praised, and then uh, for our consistency. It's, it's a, a common prejudice about Aristotle, and about uh, uh, former, former logicians in history. We, I don't know why exactly, we, Almost always, are we are presupposing that they are classic, and in, in their works there is a lot of things. We have the connectivity, we have consistency, we have uh, uh, intuitionism, we have uh, many valid approach and others and dialogical approaches that are being developed in our time recently. Yes. Uh, concerning this point, do you know a work by Newton, Bacosta, Elias Aldous, and Luis Enrique Lopes de Santos from the beginning of the 80s, before Christ? And they say explicitly that the psychologism theory is paraphrasing. I know that it was never published because Luis Enrique, uh, if I remember, Newton told me, he never uh, wanted to publish the it was also published by the Department of Mathematics, I suppose, from USP. Yeah, you know yeah. this work? I, I know this this work, but in 1998... There is a paper published by Newton and, and Otavio. No, 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 but it's later. Yeah. Uh, this uh, work before. 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 Uh, in the, 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 the last 70s or the beginning of the 80s, if I 80s. remember. I have the, 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 the paper because I'm going to get it. But I, if you don't, uh, I have a copy. I, I have a copy. And yes, you don't you don't share with me. We could mention this. Oh, of we have yeah, not mentioned yeah, it's this. A, one. It's a, it's a lacuna here. Yes. 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 By Newton, yeah, 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 right. before the paper published by Graham. Yes. Last year, sorry, what's the title of the paper? I don't remember. Uh, on the Aristotelian syllogism, uh, it's a, it's a very very clever paper. It's a it's a pity that there is still one to uh, yes. Last year in September in Salvador Bahia, we had a Brazilian logical meeting. And uh, Luiz Henrique was there, and he, uh, he mentioned that 
and he had some regret to not to have uh, yeah. published the paper because it was a very nice paper. And but let me tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> The, the paper, the, the work, was developed by Milton da Costa and, the, and uh, Luiz Henrique, the professor from Rapesp who was here yesterday, who was the first vice director of CLE. He, he, he taught at uh, the University of São Paulo, and he's the vice, di the vice scientific director of Rapesp. And they, they prepared the work, but it, it was not completely finished. And Elias Alves uh, um, discovered a mistake or something not good in the paper. And Elias Alves corrected the results in the paper. But the paper had never been finished. Only now, uh, some months ago, Luis Henrique decided to finish the paper. He presented the work uh, last September during, uh, last September during the uh, Brazilian Logic Conference, but I am supposed to convince Newton da Costa to publish, because Newton didn't reply if the paper could be published, didn't reply to Luiz Henrique, and Luiz spoke about that yesterday. And I, I, I had decided to speak personally to Newton da Costa, because it's very interesting, and the, the finished written paper is very useful. That's the story. Yeah. Yeah, one question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you look to the posterior quotation of Aristotle that when he distinguished between wise and that, mm -hmm. um, taking a kind of charity interpretation of why Aristotle uh, see that, that kinds of uh, inferences, we can look at uh, the wise as a normative perception of what is a good inference for explanation. And then if we look at, if, for example, if it departs from a contradiction to a non-identity or non-reflexive conclusion, it's not a good explanation of something. So I believe that he is taking a, a normative view and a descriptive view of what kind of inference we can do. Like, for example, we can describe such a kind of inferences, but it is not normatively good for an explanation, then the wise uh, demarcate this difference for me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And there is another um, feature. Aristotle it was never sympathetic with identity. Because for Aristotle, identity is not a good way to explain it. To explain and and um, so at the least uh, negative identities uh, a bit better maybe but they don't have a explicative power. Our our feeling uh, when you put the read the chapter by themselves they maybe you you similar feel them than us. Because, uh, for example, Aristotle is um, is a genius. Okay, Aristotle in, in, in the old book, the second book of the Paranalytics, are standing, are um, testing his his formal logical apparatus. But Aristotle is not a formalist, so uh, for for him, uh, he he could. He is clever enough to, to discover, to, to systematize, to, to, to explain, to, to expose, but it, the discovery uh, was not so, so good for his own perspective in, in order to make a syllogism as a tool of correspondence. Let's go on with Evandro. And, uh, yes. Okay, and I, will, I will reply all, all questions after. And the, the, the final chapter in Aristotle, uh, for that it has some ground for a consistent, a consistent position in Aristotle, is the chapter uh, that we made, uh, became famous uh, just, especially just after Ukashevich's famous monography, uh, 
that is the 11th chapter 11 of the book of the posterior analytics. And in this chapter, Aristotle says textually that the principle uh, of non contradiction is not necessary in every demonstration. But just in that, in those, uh, that the consistency is required. The, 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 the chapter, the, the third is that, and the, 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 the important statement is, is in, the, in the beginning. The law that it is impossible to affirm and deny simultaneously of the same predicate, of the same subject, is not expressly posited by any demonstration, except when the conclusion also has to be expressed in that form. <laughs> what I just had say, have said. Um, in which case, the proof lays down, as it is my major premises, that the major is truly affirmed of the middle, but falsely denied. And it makes no difference, however, if you add to the middle or again to the minor term, the corresponding entity. Um, here, in the final uh, part of the, the passage, Aristotle uh, constructs this as an example. Um, I, I will read for uh, speed up a bit. Um, for grant, a minor term of which it is true to predicate men, even if it it be also true to predicate not men of it. Still grant simply that man is an animal and is not not animal. And the conclusion follows. For it will be still be true to say that Callias, even if be also true, to say that not Callias is an animal and not not animal. So um, this this passage was very famous, uh, was studied by, discussed it by several authors, starting with Bill Kashevich's. And uh, although the principle here referred yes. to as ex falso non sector codality was not successfully generalized by Aristotle, it's worth pointing out that he understood that it should have been. Despite the elegance of his argument, it is clear that his demonstration, as it has come down to us, is incomposite. Nevertheless, in this case, it seems to us appropriate to consider that the hermeneutical perspective from which the Aristotelian argumentation makes sense. The Aristotelian argument in favor of a non ex falso had a great impact on the debate surrounding the conditions in medieval logic. Uh, and here, the, 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 the publication in 1998 by Da Costa and the Bueno, the Bueno will be with us in, in some days, and, and this is the reference published by uh, Clay here in Campinas uh, in a book uh, when um, they uh, indicate that uh, uh, syllogistic is quite consistent and uh, the way they suggest that could, uh, syllogistic could be obtained and uh, formalized in uh, the first C1 star, the first predicate, the first order, the uh, first, uh, pred first predicate of, of um, para consistent hierarchy of the costas of predicate calculi. Um, but if, uh, as uh, Bessus Krause has said, maybe we have to, to include the other paper before this. So uh, we have proposed a logical interpretation, a historical interpretation of Aristotle's theory of syllogism as a broad sense para consistence theory, trying to connect by means of hermeneutic analysis the results pointed out by Aristotle in passages quoted before with other issues of his logic and philosophy. Uh, it and I uh, have we published in, in 2010 uh, a paper in which we uh, dip 
um, a bit into the, the interpretation of this, uh, both passages, uh, B15 and A11. Uh, these results are uh, the basis for some rules, some of the rules of uh, for the evaluation of about syllogisms. Justify some consequentiae in some consequentiae in the development and are at the center of the debate of the ex falso sector codability. The stagiarian holds that under special conditions, his theory of deduction does not prove everything in face of contradiction, for in our terminology does not become trivial. It seems to be possible to interpret the syllogisms from opposite premises as a broad sense for a consistent theory, because from such premises, not every categorical proposition can be proved. Aristotle also, in, in uh, Alpha 11, uh, the passage of the posterior analytics, uh, distinguishes uh, between well and bad behavior categorical propositions, using the, this notion to delimit the scope of non contradiction, the principle of non contradiction. The logic that underlies the bad, bad behavior terms, the consistent terms, the, the terms that can be and can be and can be not, um, is a sense, a strict sense, for a consistent theory in that, that case. And we suggest that the role of Aristotle in the prehistory of for a consistent logic seems to be much more important than is customarily admitted. Okay, we reach Stoics, McGurk, and Stoics, and uh, that's it. Maybe the, the time allow us to finish. And the correct criterion uh, for uh, the relation followed by underlying conditional proposition on propositions has a matter was a matter of great controversy among the McGurkis and the Stoics. We, we must to remember, Migarki is a school and started another, because sometimes we, we confuse a bit these, these authors. Thanks to this quarrel, we think that the ancient Megaric is considered for conditional something analogous to the logical principle of the exos. Uh, pay attention, the Megarics. Because if Philo was a Megarian, Diodorus was a Megarian, and Chrysippus will be the Stoic, the Stoic, the Stoic, Stoicism. Um, but the remaining fragments of Ancient Stoa seem to, to endorse uh, the conclusion that the Stoics were for consistent in a broad sense. The Megarian philosophers, the abilities of Mileto, uh, Theodoro Cronos and Philo of Megara. But not only this, uh, these are, are the only the, 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 the important to our discussion, to our, our cut. And uh, the Eugulides of Mileto is the, is the guy who uh, proposes the liar paradox. Yeah. And uh, Theodoro Cronos of Iasus and the Philo of Megara both. Uh, or um, remembered by tra tradition, logical tradition, as having been proposed uh, uh, distinct uh, notions of uh, conditionals. And the Stoic philosophers, not only Persicles and Epictetus, but in, we have to do, we find uh, interesting. Chrysippus was the major major logician of all times in Stoic schools, and uh, in ancient times, uh, it's surprising, uh, at the age of Christ, first century, for example, in, uh, in the in age of the Roman Empire, uh, Chrysippus was considered by the by the doxographers uh, of that, by Aristius and the others. Uh, the major logician, the, the, the major of all logicians, is Chrysippus, it's not Aristotle. Aristotle, in the beginning of the Christian era, was considered the most, the, the, the greatest, the scientists of the sciences, scientists, not the great of logicians. The great of logicians was Chrysippus of the soul. Also, 
and the big petus was an offer, a Roman offer. Uh, we have a um, we have a few, very very few uh, records, especially of logical uh, statements of stoics. We have a, a situation very very um, um, very near to the Presocratic philosophers, uh, scarce complex, a complete scarcely. Uh, uh, completely uh, few, uh, much, much, much few um, uh, excerpts of the uh, uh, reports of the activity of the, the spike logicians. And uh, Sertus Empiricus is one of the persons who, who gave us a, a more complete discussion uh, in a passage in which he presents the conditions for the truth of conditionals accepted by the Megaricus and by the Stoics. Um, Sestus lists, states, and illustrates four conditionals discussed by the Megaricus and the Stoics, ordered in terms of increasing logical force, showing how the subsequent concepts assimilate the previous ones. Um, Sestus, Sestus was an enemy of the Stoics because <laughs> Uh, he is a behold a sceptical philosopher, and uh, he, he uh, thinks that uh, Stoics are dogmatics. Okay. So the, the subject of uh, Philo, uh, of uh, Sestus Empiricus, is, is this. In the, in the first notion, he says, for Philo, for Philo says that a true conditional is one which does not have a true antecedent, antecedent and a false consequent. For example, when it's day and I'm conversing, if it is day, then I am conversing. The second, Diodorus. But Diodorus defines it, the conditional, as one which neither is nor ever was capable of having a true antecedent and a false consequent. It's a kind of a stronger philos uh, conception, and uh, um, at all times, at all times. And finally, the notion of the attributed to principles, uh, uh, although Sestos uh, does not name him in the in the text, but the, the other other new sources uh, make the specialists the scholars to identify principles of solid position. And those who introduce, introduce connection or coherence say that a conditional holds whenever the denial of its consequent is incompatible with its antecedent, so that, according to them, the above mentioned conditionals does not, do not hold. But the following is true. If it is day, it is day. And the, four, the fourth uh, notion uh, reported by uh, Sestus is, and those who do by suggestion, suggestion declare that a conditional is true if it is a, its consequent is in fact included in its antecedent. According to this, if it is they, then it's they. And every repeated conditional will probably be false. For it is impossible for a thing itself to be included in itself. So uh, the, the fourth, the first, the second, the third, and fourth are different notions of uh, conditionals. Um, logically, <laughs> conditionals will be straight connected with the consequence relation. Because in, in Middle Ages they don't have theorem of deduction, but they work uh, as, um, informally. Uh, medievals they they work with uh, they work with as if the theorem of deduction works, and theorem of deduction meta theorem. <laughs> Allow us to 
uh, loosely speaking, convert uh, implications into deductions and, and vice versa. So we have a uh, if A then B, if and only if A deduces B. So these notions for stoics are notions of four conditionals for the first part of the, the expression. But uh, informally, at the, uh, the passing of the time, the, the, the logicians are will we uh, will um, able, able uh, will de develop uh, stand the notion embracing the notion of consequential uh, consequence. Uh, the Theodorian conditional as well the Philonian conditional are not immune to implying any proposition whatsoever on the basis of an impossible antecedent. And this is found in the main uh, scholars uh, that uh, studied uh, in study, Bob Zin studies. Uh, he is publishing a lot of new papers. And uh, Chris Ibus, uh, was touched to improve, to enforce, to uh, make, uh, produce a stronger uh, notion in, in the uh, implication of conditional in order to correct the weaker forms, philoform, diodorous form. And so, uh, um, Diodorus, uh, Chrysippus, Philos, and Diodorus uh, definitions of conditional, they deduce the exhaustive value, and from contradictions, we have everything. And the uh, Benson Bates has a quotation in the page 68, in which he says textually, the Benzians were aware that in face of uh, contradictories and false propositions, a false premises, a false antecedent could entail any consequence. Or any consequence uh, if the definite weak, the weaker definitions prevail. Uh, we may suggest that in discussing the various definitions of the true conditional, the Megarites have debated and established what later on in the scholastic period corresponds in essence to the logical principle of the ex falso. This conclusion is coherent with the affirmation that the ex falso did not come from the peripatetic tradition. Therefore, as criteria equivalent to the ex falso seem to be have been admitted by the Megaric logicians, their logic does not seem to be paraconsistent, but classical. Although the Megaric theory of the conditionals, even by Philo as well as by Theodorus, considers consequences derived from impossible antecedents as true. We cannot claim that they have achieved a demonstration of this in their logic. Beyond well, this, an explicit derivation of the principle is not found in any extant megarchy fragment and in any extant fragment of stoics. But uh, we have uh, we have some um, some information uh, from uh, other other sources uh, stoic sources that uh, probably stoics are not sympathetic to the ex falso, and the ex falso could not be deduced in their propositional logic. And some authors who adhere uh, to the stock concept of conditional described in Sestus Empiricus passage, especially three and four, do not accept any inference such as the ex falso. For us, the stoic concept of correct conditional justify a broad and also a strict logical logical or a consistent interpretation, such as that derived from the notion of the deductive consequence typical of relevant logics. To finish, 
There are positions that can be interpreted as part of consistent in Heraclitus and Aristotle. Even so, uh, in antiquity, in ancient times, ancient logic, they can say that uh, classical logic predominates in the period. And Chrysippus, Stoic logic, could be considered in the broad sense as a part consistent theory. Thank you.